This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today we're going over a Honeywell Smart Valve operation, and this style has three wiring harnesses and requires both 120 volts and 24 volts to operate, and this one is a pilot ignition valve. And so we've done several videos on this style right here that only requires two wiring harnesses and 24 volts to operate. So we have this link down in the description section below, but we're going to get in real close in order to be able to see the operation, and all these components are found in a gas furnace. So this valve requires either an EFT, an electronic fan timer board, or a fan limit control in order to tell the furnace when to turn the fan motor on. But this smart valve controls the entire combustion and safety aspect of the gas furnace. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I want to give you a tour of all of these components that are found in a gas furnace. And so this is a intermittent pilot ignition system. So this is the pilot tube. Right here is the flame rod, right here is the hot surface igniter, and here is the pilot termination. Here's your gas line, so here's your inlet to the gas, and here's your outlet to the gas. Here is your spud with your orifice, so that's where the flame's going to come out, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Here's your inlet gas, here's your outlet gas, and over here on this side right here, you have your, your pilot adjustment, so that can adjust the, the flame right here. And so up here, you have your uh, thermal limit switch, so this is, a, this is making sure that the heat exchanger is not overheating. This is a flame rollout switch, and so this is in the combustion chamber, making sure that the flames don't roll out due to maybe a crack in the heat exchanger or something like that. Here you have a terminal block, and here you have a 24 volt transformer. So we have our 24 volts coming in over here, you have your 24 volt hot and your common. And then this is going to act as our thermostat. So we're going to use these little magnet jumpers in order to turn the system on by powering this wire right here, this purple and the orange with 24 volts. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Here you have your power coming into your transformer. So you have 120 volts coming in, 24 volts on this side. And down here you have your inducer motor. And so this is going to be pulling the exhaust through the furnace heat exchanger. And so here is your little tube in order to measure your, your lowering of pressure in this chamber. So what you're trying to do is reduce the pressure in here to pull the exhaust through and so you have an air proving switch. It's also referred to as a pressure switch. And so this is a safety device. We have our multimeter here as well. We're going to be measuring voltage. And so what I want to show you is the different uh, wiring harnesses right here. Like this one right here is a eight wire harness. And so this harness is going to have your air proving switch, your pressure switch, your thermal safeties. It's going to have your 24 volt controls. And down here, this little one, this is this has four terminals, but there's only three wires on it. The two blue wires are going to be for your hot surface igniter, and your black wire is for your flame rod. And so it's going to be powering the hot surface igniter with 24 volts, and it's going to get cherry red. And here it's going to be sending about 100 volts into the, basically it's going to have 100 volts present at the flame rod. And there's what's called the flame rectification process, which we will be measuring with our multimeter. Over here, this little four prong connector is you have power on this side. Uh, coming in, so you have to have 120 volts of power here, and also you got to have your 24 volt power coming in. And so your 24 volt power is going to be on all three of these wires. And so on this side of the four pin connector, you have your wires leading to the inducer motor. And so there's a little relays inside in order to be able to uh, power your inducer motor. So let's go ahead and get this started, and I'm just going to turn my multimeter off and back on again. So now we have power on and so we can measure 120 volts right here. And so you can see we're measuring 126.9. And so that means that we have power over here. And so there's usually just a big jumbled mess of wires in a furnace. And so it's hard to hard to really see. So you can you might be taking your voltage measurements and things like that over here. And so you have 126.7 volts. And so nothing is going to occur until you have these jumped. And so right now we have 24 volts up here. So let me just come up like this so you can see. 28.8, which means we also have 28.8 down here. And so you see your yellow wire, which is third from the bottom on the left. That one is your 24 volt common. And this light blue wire right here, this 
is your uh, 24 volt tap. And so between these two wires, you should have 24 volts right here. You also have your orange data wire. It's indicated by the word data. And then you also have your purple wire right here, which that is your R24 volt power. So in the thermostat, we will be connecting basically 24 volt power to both the data and also the R wire. And so if we do that, we can turn the system on. Now, if we pull one of these off, it's not going to allow the whole thing to occur. So if we pull this one off, it's not going to allow the sequence to occur. But if we leave both of them on, I'll let you see what happens here. We're going to have 24 volts. So 24 volt power is going to go to the hot surface igniter. I'm just going to turn it off and turn it back on again, just because what I did is I pulled the wires off. And so it's going to run through a little bit of a safety check for a little time increment. But I'm going to turn the power back on so you can see this occurring. 18, 21 volts. So there is a voltage drop because of the current being drawn by that hot surf igniter. So that's a 24 volt hot surf igniter. And so now you see that there's no power at that hot surf igniter. Now there is power being sent to that flame rod right here. And so if we were to put our multimeter lead right in here and check against ground. You see it's about 110 volts. So what we did right there is we messed up the flame rectification signal basically with the multimeter. Uh, but it, it does have 100 to 110 volts basically and that's present on that flame rod. We're gonna actually be measuring the flame rectification process that proves that that pilot flame actually is lit. Let's turn this off for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the power off to this. What I use to do this is I have the the end, just like this, of another uh, hot surface igniter and flame rod setup. So what I did is I cut that old section off. And so basically I can, I can do this right here. I can push that in. I can push this in right here. And then I can take my multimeter probe and we're gonna be measuring a flame rectification signal and it's gonna be in microamps. And so I will use a alligator clamp right here, turn my multimeter right there. And so now we're, we're measuring in series and I'm going to plug this back in again. And we're going to turn our power on and we're going to, we're going to actually measure. It's about one to two microamps on this small flame rod. You might get more microamps on a larger flame rod on a standard furnace. So I just want to show you what happens. So right there you see 1.5 DC microamps. And if we were to lose that signal by just say pulling this out, it no longer sees the flame there. And so it's going to shut the gas off. And so what's happening is you have alternating current present on that flame rod and it's traveling to that ground uh, right here. So if I disconnect here, it's gonna shut it off. So let me just turn this off for a sec. So I'll take my little tester assembly out and I'll plug this back in. And so you have 100 to 110 volts on this wire right here. And so you have 110 volts on that rod and the flame goes between the rod and this metal up here on the top, which is really hot right now. And so it's going to be rectified between the rod and this metal. And then basically what's happening is this wire is also going to have your direct current signal uh, on it and it's going to be coming back through this pilot tube right here onto the gas valve it's going to this pilot tube actually completes the circuit for your flame rectification process that's how that works and so if you need to replace this this little piece right here you can basically take this little clip off and you can pull this right out and so you can replace this little hot surface igniter which is a silicone carbide. You can replace it with a silicon nitride uh, version, which may last a little longer. And this little rod may be bent over or might need to be cleaned with some uh, non-soap steel wool. Uh, but basically, I'm going to put this back together and we're going to continue on with our training. So let's continue on with our testing. The multimeter is set on voltage for alternating current. And so right now, we have voltage. We have 24 volts 
on each one of these wires right here. So we've got 28 volts, 28 volts, 28 volts, and nothing's happening. What you want to do is you want to measure on these wires right here because you could have a relay that's bad on the inside of here. And so if you don't have 120 volts like I have right now, then there could be a little relay inside of here that's bad. But what I actually have happening right now is I just have the inducer motor unplugged. Another thing that you could have happening is you could have a bad capacitor on this inducer motor. And so the inducer motor may be getting its 120 volt power, but maybe the capacitor is bad and that's why this is not turning on. But as long as you have 24 volt power on each of these three wires and this is your common, you're measuring between them, you can measure right here between the orange and yellow, the light blue and yellow, and the purple and yellow, and nothing's happening, you want to first look at your indicator light and see if you have any a uh, certain flash number right there to lead you in the right direction, but basically the first thing to turn on is supposed to be the inducer motor. You could also have these thermal limit switches right here. Uh, one of those could be tripped, but typically you're always going to have your inducer motor being able to turn on unless this is in lockout. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn this back on. So now we're turning on. We're going to get our 24 volt power to there. I'm going to pull the pressure switch wire. So what's going to happen is we are not going to be able to have any uh, pilot gas come out of here because our pressure switch is open right now. Now here's, here's the thing with this particular smart valve. It does use some direct current signals here. So if we were to just stay on voltage for alternating current, if we measured on this wire right here and our common. We're measuring 15 volts here and we're also measuring 15 volts here. So 14 volts and even when we plug this in we're measuring right around 15 volts. It's not really telling us if the switch is open or closed. You'll see if I am measuring with direct current you see I'm measuring negative 12 volts of direct current and here you see I'm measuring about positive 12 volts but if I was to put this on here, now I'm measuring my negative 12 volts again. You see it's using direct current signals here. Just like over here on the thermal limit switch, 12 volts there, see 12 volts. We could even put it on the ground and you see you have 12 volts. So it's using direct current signals, so you're really not going to be maybe testing these with a multimeter, but what you can do is you can jump these out temporarily to see to make sure basically you're going to bypass only for testing purposes. And really you want to use this status light so the PDF I have of this linked in the description section doesn't give you any voltage measurements on here and so that's what I'm trying to trying to help demystify how this works. So basically this switch down here uh, when you have 24 volts uh, powering both your uh, right here, this is your uh, data wire, your 24 volt, and your R wire. Uh, basically, what this should be at is open. And then once the inducer motor turns on, that's when it should close. So it needs to be open like this when it turns on, and then it's going to electrically close, proving that this inducer motor is running. And then as well as this right here, you're also going to be having your smart valve monitoring these. These are always supposed to be closed. So these should just be closed switch. So you could measure right here. So you can pull this one off and pull this one off right here. And we can use electrical resistance to measure across these. And so you see we're measuring 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance. And so that's telling us that both of these switches are closed. Likewise, over here, we can take an electrical resistance measurement and you see that it's OL, meaning it's open. So let me go ahead and turn this back on and we're going to check this with our electrical resistance to see if it's closed. All right, so we have everything set up, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and turn power on. You see we're reading OL, now we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of electrical resistance. Now we're measuring 0 0.9, 0 0.7, but the switch is closed right now. So that's what you want to know. And if you want to just verify that this is not the problem, what you, what you can do is look at this right here. So this measures uh, 0.18. So 0.18 inches of water calm is when this is supposed to close. So when there's no 
uh, pressure exerted by this tube right here, then this switch should be open when there's pressure here, this should be closed. So we can measure that with a water column manometer. So we have our digital water column manometer measuring 0.8 inches of water column, which is much higher than 0.18. So we can also just take this right here and we can tee it in so it's connected with the pressure switch. So our digital water column manometer can get teed in with our pressure switch. And so right now we're measuring zero inches of water column. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. So we're measuring 0.75 inches of water column. And so this is closed because 0.78 is much higher than 0.18 for this pressure switch. And so we're measuring 0.0, .0 ohms of electrical resistance. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off power to the inducer. And you just watch the multimeter. Now we're in OL because we lowered uh, lower than 0.18 inches of water column. So that's just proving that this switch is closing and operating correctly, which, which it is. So the long and short of this is that you wanna make sure that your thermal limits are closed and your pressure switch is open before it turns on and closes when the inducer motor is running. You wanna make sure that this is powering the inducer motor. You wanna make sure that it has a flame rectification signal proving that there's a flame. And basically, it just has a circuit board. It's like an ignition control module all inside of the gas valve itself. And so that's why it doesn't have to have a integrated furnace control board in order to monitor the flame signal. This is doing it on its own. So it's a little bit complicated, you know, because you can't really uh, measure everything, uh, but you just want to make sure that you have your 24 volt signals on your three wires down here. Uh, different wiring versions may not have this little uh, lower left hand late blue wire on it, uh, but basically you just have your common wire, your 24 volt hot wires, your safety wires, your pressure switch wires, your hot surface igniter, your flame rod wire, your inducer wires, and your 120 volt power wires. Make sure to check out your, your blinking status code light. Make sure that this is switched on. And you can also do your adjustment on your pilot flame over here. So just say that that flame is not engulfing that flame rod and also kind of covering over this metal right here. You might be able to adjust that pilot flame right here. You also want to make sure that if this is natural gas, so maybe you have right around 3.5 inch water column on this tap and you can measure that with a digital water column manometer. If this is propane, you just want to make sure it's converted correctly and so you have 11 to 13 inch water column on this side and you'll have over here maybe about 10 or maybe 11 inch water column over here. You just got to follow the manufacturer's literature and you want to follow the wiring diagrams in order to take your, your voltage measurements. I hope this video helped, and if you want to learn more about gas furnaces, we have other videos linked down in the description section below, including this 24-volt Honeywell smart valve operation and testing. And so we also have gas furnace articles at our website at acservicetech.com, and we also have our refrigerant charging and also our inverter mini-split books available over at acservicetech.com and on Amazon. So hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.